Listen to this. Trumpets. Listen to that trumpet. Just the anointing is all over it. Passion. Passion. You know, you're the instrument of the Lord. The Lord wants to blow through you. <laughs> the breath of life. Come on. The thing about an instrument is all it does is yield to whoever plays it. <laughs> just let the Lord breathe you and let the notes of heaven come and just bring stabilization to the earth to divide. Darkness from light. Oh, I've been getting whacked on this song all day. <laughs> what you do is you create a playlist, you click on it, and then you go to your, your channel or whatever on YouTube and go to your playlist that you created and you press the loop button. Hours, you can say <laughs> the thoughts. <laughs> Oh, Shaka, just let the Lord breathe through you. Never heard this song before until today. Heaven's all over it. Just want to share it with you guys. I'm going to put it in the description so you guys can have a drink. <laughs> just put your fingertips to your lips. And just breathe in the kingdom that's at hand. <sighs> Don't get mad. Just you'll be sad if you miss out in the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't judge anything according to the flesh. We ju we discern all things by the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. True discernment is Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. He's the leader. He's our discernment. Jesus, you got an earthly treasure, <laughs> you got a heavenly treasure in your earthen vessel. This song is called Heaven's Treasure and it's 7 minutes and 10 seconds long. If you want to flip the world upside down, you know what 710 spells when you flip the world upside down, right? <sighs> spells oil <laughs> just look at it just look at the fresh oil and let it burn through your entire being come on you want to be anointed for the dead so you can be resurrected in the life of Jesus Christ <laughs> that anointing oil is life more abundantly you can think better with the mind of Christ. You'll drink better. You won't be drinking alcohol and anything to get intoxicated because he's your intoxication. You can drink. You have a double portion. You can drink with your mouth like water. You could also drink the washing water of his word through your heart. Hallelujah. What are you thirsty for more though? Righteousness? or the natural realm. <laughs> if we don't drink water in the natural realm, we will die. If we don't dry, if we don't drink his rivers of living water pouring through our entire being, it's probably because we are dead and we need that resurrection life more abundantly pouring through our entire being. We don't need the knowledge of good and evil. We need to taste and see how good the Lord is by partaking of that tree of life. He is the burning bush. No, he's the tree of life. The reason that bush wasn't consumed because there's no destruction in God, just life. But everything that gets destroyed is because it already is death. Everything that God puts his anointing, it'll either destroy something in your life or it'll be magnified and glorified through your life if it's redeemable. Hallelujah. Just drinking that anointing. I just looked, I was typing something on my Facebook today and, it, and I was laughing because I was already tanked in, in the oil and I put LOL. I usually put a capital LOL. 
Is it's a it's a huge laugh. I'm not faking it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but I put just a just what do you call those small letters? L O L. And then I look like it looked like this. L O L, man. It's praise and worship and surrender to the King of Glory, <laughs> Lord of Lords. King of Kings, Satan tried to just take that. It means Lucifer, our Lord. No, it doesn't. It means Lord of Lords, man. That's our Savior, Jesus Christ. Devil don't get nothing. He's a copycatting, fake, lying deceiver. And he's under our feet because we sit in heavenly places. When that fresh oil that was poured out upon the sons of glory... You know what it what came, flowed down from Aaron's beard? It flowed from the head, right? Come on. He anoints my head with oil. Jesus Christ is the anointing oil that pours down through his entire body. Which body we are, he cakes us in the oil. He's the source of the oil. He's our vision. If you want to be a wise virgin, go get your provision from the master. Pay the price to go spend time with the Savior. Go to those who sell the oil. What is the price of the oil? It's just sacrificing your life to receive His life. Hallelujah. That oil. Oh, I didn't press the loop button. Whoops. Here, you can watch. I'll give you a demonstration. I'll turn it down a bit, though. It just loops. Oh. Seven minutes and ten seconds of fresh oil. <laughs> That'll turn the world upside down. It's so funny because everything is prophetic today. I was just scrolling on my Facebook and there was like all these big adults just playing and they had all the toddlers sitting on this couch and they're all playing on the slides and they're throwing dolls and stuff and rolling on the floor and and man, I was like, that's what happens when you turn the world upside down. You know, the all stoic adults who are all have to be all serious all the time become childlike and free. And the children, instead of, you know, freaking out and stuff, like they're deceived you with Christ in heavenly places, being still and knowing that He is God. You know? <laughs> I was like, man, when we turn the world upside down, it's the way it is in heaven where everyone's free and knows God. <laughs> No one's trying to impress anybody with their eloquent wisdom or their words or their outer court or any part of thing like that. Everyone's just impressed with Jesus. <laughs> He's the light of that place. He's the light and delight, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just delight ourselves in Him. We adore Him and He becomes the door pouring through our heavenly temples, you know, temples of the Holy Spirit. Oh. You need the fresh oil. You can be like a little teepee tent or you can be like a freshly oiled motorhome for the Holy Ghost to just <laughs> Holla, enjoy his life more abundantly pouring through you. <laughs> He'll carry you where your flesh don't want to go, but you don't care because you're so intoxicated on his bliss, on his love and his spirit that you'll willingly even go even unto death. Because you don't care for your life, you care for his life. His life is way better than any human life could ever be on this planet. <laughs> but we're with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. You know, I was just remembering, like, this guy wanted to debate me. And the guy was, I just finished holding the camel from the, that this street person put in my hand. And the Holy Spirit presence was so thick and so strong. And he put this camel in my hand, and I had a choice. Do I focus upon what people think about me, or do I just, like, who cares because the glory is so strong? And you know me. I'm, <laughs> I'm holding this camel, getting blasted. This camel, he starts prophesying, like, the John the Baptist thing over me. And then this guy comes in, right in the midst of this glory. And these people are, everyone saying, like, yeah, he wants to talk to you. And I looked at him, and I could see the demon in him. It was just a religious debating spirit I'm, I'm well aware of and, you know, actually well, well versed in because I, I was one myself. <laughs> I'm still getting delivered from that as I go from glory to glory. Sometimes it might come on me and I want, want to try to, try to, you know, debate someone or, or whatever. But 
we go from glory to glory. And anyways, this guy's coming to me. And I was like, man, I just want to love the hell out of this guy. <laughs> and like, he's like, yeah, this guy wants to talk to you. And he's very serious. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Bring him over here. I went after him. Hey, brother. <laughs> I'm trying to hug him. And he's like, no, 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 no. I was like, yeah, brother. We're brothers. You know, <laughs> I'm a little hammered on the Holy Ghost. And I realized right then and there that the religious spirit fears the hug of the Lord. <laughs> Oh man, Jesus wants to love the hell out of everyone. He was a full demonstration. Even the way he died on the cross, like just a position of a hug, you know? Like just come unto me, all you are weary and laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. <laughs> you know, come to me and eat the bread of my presence. Come to me if you're thirsty. Go on into the highways and the byways and the streets and let them invite them to my feast, you know? Jesus just wants to be with us so we can feast with him, feast upon him. You know, he was placed in a manger, right? A feeding trough for animals so that when we feast upon him, we don't just, we lose our animal nature and we take on the mind of Christ. Every time that you encounter the living God, you get your mind renewed. Every time you feel his touch, just another, just one touch from the Lord, it renews you in the spirit of your mind because you had a spirit touch. And you have one more glimpse of God, one more, you know, like, unwrap, one more piece of the veil comes ripping off, you know, we, we see him through a darkly mirror, you know, but we go from glory to glory by beholding him. <clears throat> so every time you get touched by the Lord, you get your mind renewed. You get renewed in the spirit of your mind. <clears throat> you don't usually see him with these eyes. I mean... It'll project out of your heart, like I said in the last video, and you'll see it, like, with your eyes open or closed, it doesn't matter, it's coming through you, the kingdom of God within you, projecting out through you, just like you're a living stone radiating God, you know? A living stone is a revelation, and so, we're a revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a revelation of the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we reveal by our, our, like, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. But in holiness, true holiness, which is the purity of God and the surrender to God and it's just, just God, the spirit of God. This is called the spirit of holiness. You know, I'll worship you in the spirit of holiness. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. It's like you won't even see the Lord when you look in the mirror. <laughs> People won't see the Lord in you. They'll probably see a religious spirit until we get fully delivered of that. Just by feasting upon the fruit of the Spirit on that tree of life. And it's so tempting sometimes just to reach over and grab you know, a piece of fruit from the knowledge of good and evil because we've grown up in that. But when you realize that doesn't produce life, you just, I don't want that. I'd rather sit with the children blowing bubbles, bubbles of anointing, bubbles of glory. <laughs> Then with like professors who memorize the entire Bible and have hermeneutics and I don't even know all those big words, but they can this have all these fancy words, but there, it's just dry and there's no anointing at all. There's no peace. There's no transformation of spirit. They're not renewed in the spirit of their mind. They're puffed up in their natural mind. <laughs> from my experience, from what I'm seeing, it's not condemnation. It's just a, it's just a true, accurate description of what the knowledge of good and evil will produce in you. It won't produce that relationship with God that comes with childlikeness. It comes with just like being innocent again. Like in the garden before the fall, they were walking in innocence. They weren't aware of themselves. They weren't aware that they were naked. They, were, they didn't look at themselves. They looked at God. And the more you look at God, it's like you just get enraptured in His love. And it's like his love just, you see where reality came from and like the natural realm just kind of fades off like an old dream and then you're just in reality because out of God comes the reality of realities. Out of him came the heavens and the earth. Out of God comes the reality of realities. <laughs> he is true reality and out of him flows the issues of life. I mean literal life. This. Faith of Jesus Christ holds my body molecules together and my spirit molecules and whatever they're made of. Light. <laughs> yeah, he holds us all together by the word of his power. 
the word of God is more powerful than any force on the earth. Because God spoke it, and by his faith, he holds it all together. One word. <laughs> so what are you going to try to, try to, like, throw a nuclear bomb at God? <laughs> what are you going to try to, you know, they, they, I've heard these testimonies of, like, uh, missionaries where they're in the forest and they won't reject Jesus Christ and, and they have all these AK-47s and they're just, okay, well, we're going to kill you and your family. And, just, and when all the smoke clears, everyone's still standing. What is that? Put on, maybe they had the full armor of God on. Perhaps they, they were like Jesus Christ when they went to throw him off the mountain and, and then uh, he just passed through them. <laughs> Perhaps they went into the temple of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps they just like went inwards from where they live from, where the kingdom of God is within them. <laughs> and they were hidden from the traps, from the pride of men, the scripture said. Hide me in the secret place of your presence from the pride of men. You know, that protection of the Lord, I know it firsthand. I've, the easiest example is when I was just, I didn't feel a drop of anointing, but God said, I want you, through an open vision, I want you to go preach at this church and whatever. And it was a street church and I went there, I obeyed and there was glory. There was people were getting saved, healed, delivered, all sorts of like just signs and wonders. I would just talk about what God shows me and people would just fall in the spirit. The joy of the Lord would hit the place. But this one particular meeting, I had my guitar and I'm strumming my guitar and nothing. I didn't feel any anointing. I didn't feel the presence of God. I was a little bit frustrated, but I was still, I'm just going to break on. I'm going to keep on pressing through until I break through and the heavens are going to open in here. And then all of a sudden I see out of the corner of my eye, this darkness coming towards me, this demon spirit in a man who wants to hurt me. And he came up to me very fast. And then is when he was like one or two feet away from my face, he just oh, he stopped and his eyes went wide. And I felt like went from zero to like boom, this heavy anointing. Spirit of God just landed like he was my shield. I was in obedience. I obeyed him. I, I went where he sent me to go. And he empowered me to do what he sent me to do. <laughs> just to be a light in the dark places. I asked him to send me in the darkest places, God. And I'll go and I'll just shine your light. And he did. I left the church system and I began to shine him on the streets just like Jesus. You know, no longer me living but Christ doing the works through me. And sometimes I would get in the way and I learned from that. Like, that sucks. The guy comes running up to me. And he's like, his eyes go wide and he takes off. He's like, you have the power. I said, stop, get over here. I don't have the power. That, that was just the angel of the Lord. I said, oh, that's Jesus Christ. You've seen his power. Now get over here. You got to get born again. And he got born again. And we sat down, we ate with him and he, he wanted me to pray for him. He didn't have his mind renewed yet. I was like, well, what do you want prayer for, bro? After you know, after we got him born again, he's you know, got to, he's got to get discipled now. And he's like, I want ten wives. I'm like, dude, you've asked for a hard thing. Not that it's hard to have ten wives, but it, one wife is hard enough. <laughs> ten wives? Gosh, dude, I'm not gonna pray for you to have ten wives. You be married to Jesus Christ. That's enough. <laughs> you know, I can't remember if I prayed for one wife for him or not. Whatever, I'm not gonna sow into his lust or his whatever he thinks he's been growing up. It doesn't matter. The point is this: God protected me. God was my shield. I didn't protect myself. I was like actually kind of irritated because I couldn't sense the presence of God. God is our shield. God is our reward. God is our life. So, if you can live a lifestyle where you don't fear death, the only way that 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 will ever come is if you're so absorbed in the life of God that death doesn't have any pull on you whatsoever. But you'll, you'll never ever get that in your own strength. That comes by knowing God as your shield, knowing God as your armor, knowing God as your protector. And you hear his voice and you obey his voice. You know, whoever believes in him, he gave us power to become the sons of God in John 1 it says. You gotta believe in him. And he's a reward of those who diligently seek him because we find him 
And when we find him, we find his voice, we find his love, we find his reality. Whereas like this natural realm feels so real until you encounter the living God. And then it just feels like that reality of the earth was just like a, it was like a phantom. It was like a dream. It was like a distant dream. And you're in reality when you're with him. And yeah, he is our shield. He's our protector. He's our life. He's our bread of, you know, he's the fruit that we eat. I mean, everything that you eat, partake of, of the, of the fruit from the tree of life. It's called tree of life. The life of those fruits are in, like imparted into you and through you. Like you taste the peace and you can walk in that peace and other people come around you and they sense the peace of God that passes all understanding. They sense the peace of God. They sense the fruit of the Spirit and they ask, what is that? Well, that's the presence of God. You have the power. I was like, well, yeah, that's just Jesus. <laughs> come and get over here and get born again. You're without excuse because he's revealed himself to you and it was like, you know, through one of his love slaves, you know. <laughs> Oh yeah. This whole gospel thing is awesome. It's easy. You know, if you if you're weighed down with cares of this world and I got to do this, I got to do that, the only thing that you need to do is love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, and then you'll love your neighbor as you love yourself. <sighs> it's like as you just gaze upon him his 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 the fire burning in his heart and in his eyes comes through your heart it's like a path for your feet and you just like you know thy word is a lamp unto my feet <laughs> and a light unto my path he, we just walk in the way he is the way his light is the way we follow the spirit and the spirit burns through our hearts and it enlightens the path to show us if we're walking in darkness walking in deception walking in the light walking in the truth it's all shown by the holy spirit pouring through us he's the one who leads us <laughs> hallelujah and it's super fun it's not tedious even when god asks you to do something it might seem like like I, I think I put this on my Facebook, like whenever God stretches you, it's like I was just picturing like this curled up person and then God stretches you and he made them all straight again. When God stretches you, he makes crooked things straight. You're in the straight and narrow road. You're in the straight and narrow way. There's only one way, Yahweh, Jesus Christ. Everything that he did and walked in this realm, we get to walk and do as his body is his collective body and he will do it again through us <laughs> remember when he got baptized or whatever and a voice from heaven said this is my son and I'm well pleased and you know if you're in the son God is well pleased that that's the only requirement he just wants you to be saved and get to know him and then follow his blueprints follow his voice follow his spirit and he'll lead you into all truth he'll lead you from glory to glory and to your destiny. Your destiny is to be with Him and in Him and full of Him and reflect Him. That's it. Simple as that. It's like, I gotta do works. Well, do good works. Good, wor good works are when the Holy Spirit does the works through you and you've yielded to Him 100%. Dead works is when the flesh does it because the flesh has been crucified. <laughs> Dead works is when it doesn't work. <laughs> And it's just like you get frustrated and you try to do everything in your own strength. You try to stop sinning in your own strength. You try to, you know, drag people out of wheelchairs in your own strength and they don't get healed. You pray for the sick, nothing happens. And then you realize that there actually is blueprints to how God does things on earth as you see it in heaven. So you got to see God. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God if you want to see God. He will purify your heart the longer you gaze upon Him. As you just gaze at Him, reality unravels. He shows you blueprints. He gives you visions, dreams, revelations, excitement. Apathy comes from a lack of seeing Him, a lack of pursuing Him. I remember when I was depressed, I had no motive to do anything. I just wanted to lay there and die. But when I'm full of life, I just want to share the life of God. That's just because you're just so excited. You're full of life. You're full of peace. You're full of love. You're full of joy. You're full of life more abundantly. And you can't help but love. You can't help but to seek to build others up. Love doesn't seek itself. Love seeks others to be edified. And you can't keep this kingdom to yourself. You have to share it. 
It's in the nature to share the goodie bag. You know, I was like that even, you know, practically before I got saved. Well, I got saved and I backslid, but when I was in the world, I would hear something awesome, like a song or something, and I would just show it to all my friends. I'd like, check out this song. I'd read, a, I'd read a, a cool comic book and I would show it to all my friends. Look at this comic book. And now we got the gospel. You know, it's greater life more abundantly. I'm like, look at this life. It's all, it's so easy. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And you can go from glory to glory. The reward he unravels himself within you by gazing upon him. <laughs> Just looking at him, and I just threw up all these little books, and you know, the, uh, the the file quest, the call, the torch and the sword, Song of Solomon. I just look at these books, man. I'm growing. I'm getting whacked off of them. This song here that's in the description as I post this video. Listen to it. Drink in the words. Oh man, it's so good. Anything with anointing on it, I just. I want that. I want to drink that. I want to read that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I don't even realize if I'm talking like a mile a minute. I usually talk pretty slow, but <laughs> feels pretty good in the temple of the Holy Ghost today. I need fresh oil. So do you. And if you don't, then well, you're either so intoxicated in the Holy Ghost that you're laying on the floor laughing and crying simultaneously, or you are so dead and blind that you cannot even see this far in front of your face. Because <laughs> the veil has been placed over you. The God of this age has blinded the hearts and the minds so that we cannot see Christ, but that veil is taken away in Christ, and you are in Christ if you are a believer. <laughs> oh, man. I saw this, this, this post of this, this Christian yesterday, well-meaning Christian. I could see where she was coming from. She said that unless you like, have the Holy Ghost and are speaking with tongues, you're not even saved. I'm like, that's not even biblical. Like, you know, I was so tempted to get into the knowledge of good and evil and the debates, but I just, I don't know. I posted a scripture that says, like, Paul said that not everyone speaks with tongues, not everyone prophesies, not everyone has the gift of healing, not everyone's an apostle, not everyone's a prophet, but seek earnestly the, the greater gifts. And, you know, I can't even remember the full scripture. I read it in the, the Passion Translation. And it's like, yeah, so that means if I don't have the gift of healing and I can't, I pray for the sick and they don't get healed, it means I'm not saved. Like, it's so dumb. Whoever believes in their heart, and confesses with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of the glory of God the Father, they'll be saved. What is saved? It's just having, giving your life to God and God coming and living His life through you. <laughs> you get crucified with Christ and Christ comes through you and lives His life through you and you have life more abundantly. It's not saying a sinner's prayer. It's being lit up with the living God who obliterates sin through you by His precious blood, through the precious blood of Jesus. You know, I've said a sinner's prayer a million times and you know it wasn't until I began pursuing God that he filled me and just showed me that life of the spirit life that he is you know, anyone can say a sinner's prayer and not mean it like what is a sinner's prayer <laughs> what is a sinner's prayer why don't we just pray with in the spirit of holiness why don't we pray in the Holy Spirit why don't we just pray as we surrender our lives to God what is praying? It's just communion with the living God and you actually hear his voice too. Like you can hear his voice. He hears your voice, what, what, you know? I thought this was a relationship, bro. You know, of course it's a relationship. <laughs> you just need to learn God's language. He speaks spirit. He speaks dreams. He speaks visions. He speaks through angels. He speaks through pastors. He speaks through nature. He speaks through donkeys. He speaks through whirlwinds. He whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. What is your ears? A pure heart. But it's the same thing throughout the whole scripture. They all tie together. But just to make it as simple as possible, to be saved is to be filled with Holy Spirit. And who we receive when we confess our sins and just give our lives over. And we just thank you, Jesus. I don't know. 
I don't want to make it more complicated than it is. It's just you give your life over to God and he be, Jesus Christ becomes your Lord. He becomes your Savior. He becomes your Master. You follow Him. You obey Him. You read, his, you read the Scripture so you can learn what's available for those who believe. And then you'll start seeing through those who don't believe because <laughs> they'll criticize what's available. <laughs> Gifts are not for today. They've passed away. <laughs> There's no apostles today. They're all died in the Bible. There's only 12 apostles. If they don't realize there's actually more than 12, like 28 mentioned in the entire Bible. <laughs> Little Barnabas <laughs> was an apostle. Anyways, uh, don't want to go down that road because it's just... Pfft. We need to know the Holy Spirit of truth personally. And we can. <sighs> Jesus Christ went to the Father. He, says, he said, if I don't go away... I cannot send the Spirit of Truth or whatever, the Holy Spirit. But because He went away, He sent the Holy Spirit to search it, who searches the deep things of God and reveals it to us so that we can walk in the deep things of God. We can get in over our head in the rivers of living water so that our head is the only thing that guides us. Our head is Christ as we're His body. Hallelujah. Ugh. We have one Lord, one Master, one God, Father of all. Just like we're, we follow His voice. And it's really fun. <laughs> I love the oil. Holy Spirit. God, I just want to thank you today for the fresh oil. I want to thank you today for your body, God. That you laid down your life to pick us up so that we can lay down our lives and carry you to lift others up. You lift up others through your body, God. That you don't have to be an apostle or a prophet or a, a great teacher or a mighty pastor. You just need to be like that donkey. <laughs> just carrying Jesus. You know, you just need to carry Jesus, man. That's it. The donkey wasn't looking at himself saying, Look at me, I got the ministry of carrying the Messiah. You guys need to give me your offerings and tithes. No, man, the donkey was just carrying Jesus, probably jacked up in the glory, just radiating from Jesus, you know? <laughs> like, the donkey's like, man, there's so much glory here just carrying this, this God, you know? <laughs> and that's what we are, man. We're, but he crucified the donkey nature, man. <laughs> Placed in a feeding trough so we could feed upon him and receive his angelic nature, the Christ nature. Get born again of the Spirit so we don't walk in that cursed mindset where we took a crown of thorns and just right into the skull, you know. Took his took our cursed kingdom, our cursed mindset, and translated us into to his kingdom to put on a crown of glory, to wear the mind of Christ, to lead us and guide us. Someone said on my Facebook today, you know, I put I can't even remember what I put, like something about oh yeah, the Religious spirits fear the hug of the Lord. Because I have another video about the slug of the Lord. Where the slug of the Lord showed up and we were just, me and my friend Avery were in this glory realm. We couldn't even, he couldn't even go home for a while because he was, he was just frozen in the glory. <laughs> and we watched the slug just go by in this glory realm that we were in. And it was like, it was, there was so much revelation. It was like, man, he is just caked in the sauce, man. Not a worry in the world. He's just like kind of cruising along at his own pace, not fretting, not not turning to the left or to the right. He's just going straight, <laughs> you know, just dripping, leaving a trail. <laughs> He's a trailblazing slug of glory. <laughs> and, uh, but anyways, she thought I meant when I put hugs. She thought he said, "Oh, was that autocorrect for the slug of the Lord?" <laughs> No, religious spirits fear the slug of the Lord and the hug of the Lord. <laughs> He's like, was that autocorrect? I was like, the mind of Christ autocorrects our lives, you know, automatically. When you have the mind of Christ, you know the right things to do. You know what's false. You know what's fake. You know what, what people, when people speak the words, if the anointing is in it or if the annoying darkness is in it, you know, the, the mind of Christ will autocorrect your life. And you just kind of go in, just let, let everything just put it on cruise control. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. And you're just kind of like, well, I guess I can kick back and relax in this heavenly place in Christ Jesus and, and let him drive the vehicle for a while. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like just uh, 
allowing God to lead you and to guide you into all truth and not worrying about just enjoying the ride, enjoying, 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 <laughs> enjoy, <laughs> enjoying the ride as He takes the wheel and drives you through all these different realms and places. And it may look scary in the natural room where people want to hurt you and harm you and they come at you with guns and knives and want to hurt you, and but the, the, the anointing is your protection. Put on the full armor of God. God is your protector. If they couldn't arrest Jesus, they want to throw him off a mountain and murder him, but it wasn't his time because the oil of joy was on him, the oil of gladness, the anointing oil that turns the world upside down was on him. He walked right through them. How do you walk through a mob of people who want to murder you? Well, you have to live from a higher reality. How do you walk on the water? You live in a higher dimension than in an astral realm. I tried walking on the air. I'm like, well, air has, you know, uh, water molecules in it. I'll just walk on the air. I thought God wanted me to walk on the air because I woke up out of a dream. <laughs> and then I just took one step and I smashed my face. <laughs> and then I just wrote the dream down. And then I released the dream in a, in a service. And as soon as I strummed the first couple chords and sang the first lyric, bam, it hit some woman and she fell out drunk in the Holy Ghost. The song's called Walk on the Water. <laughs> In my dream, I was like, I was going on this boat, we were sinking, it was going down, man. And I was like, oh no, and then I began to walk to the front of the ship, and I was standing at the front of the ship, and the boat was going down, like, oh no, now what am I going to do? And then I heard a voice speak out of the heavens, well, why don't you just walk on the water? <laughs> I was like, yes, and then psh, I woke up, and I'm like, I thought God wanted me to walk on the water, and then I just wrote a song about it, and somebody else got lifted up out of the darkness who was sinking in despair, and, you know, whatever they were going through. So it was a little bit off in the interpretation, but yeah, the story is pretty good. <laughs> I learned that, you know, I smashed my face so many times trying to walk through the walls. I'm like, well, Jesus could do it. If Jesus can walk on the water and walk through walls, yeah, trying to do everything in my own strength, I'm going to walk through the wall. And I just, I don't care. Bam! Hit the wall. Sometimes, you know, we just need to keep on hitting the wall until we finally get our breakthrough. Yeah, you pray for the first person, they don't get healed, and you pray for the next one, they don't get healed, and they die, you know. <laughs> Does that mean that God doesn't heal today? Or are we going out of our own knowledge, or our own expectation, our own, uh, what do you call it? Are we exalting our circumstances above the Word of God? Jesus Christ went about healing the sick, all who are oppressed of the devil. I mean, if it's in the covenant, by His stripes we are healed, then yeah, of course it's in the covenant. And then later on, the more I pressed in and praying, 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 praying going into hospitals, putting it, I was, I was going to put on a Pope suit, you know? <laughs> I was like, because like, well, they allow those people to, because like, we got kicked out of the hospital. Well, anyway, I just go to hospitals, we'd pray for the sick, and I've never seen anyone instantly heal right in front of my eyes. Except for like, you know, people with colds and stuff, they'll feel a little bit better, someone will feel peace. And, but, and then it start. the more I press in, <laughs> I, I started getting healed. I mean, it was easier to pray for me to get healed than somebody else. But what I didn't realize is those are gifts of healing. Sometimes people, it would, they wouldn't get, those are gifts of miracles are instant. Healing is progressive. It just sped up. And so I'm sure a lot of those people probably got healed, but it just wasn't manifest right away in front of our eyes. One guy I was praying for, he had, Something was wrong with his shoulder. This was a miracle. Something was wrong with his shoulder. And I prayed for him. I, and I said, how does it feel? Like, oh, it still hurts. And so like, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just praying in the Holy Ghost. God, what is the problem here? And then I saw there was like something on his shoulder. And I just like, in the natural, but also in the spirit, I just reached over. I pulled that thing off of his shoulder. I threw it down. And I said, be healed or whatever. <laughs> And then I said, now, sh now spin your shoulder around. How does that feel? It's like, and he got healed. He's like, it, it doesn't hurt. What happened? What was the difference? One, I was just praying that I was just hitting the air, just hoping it'll land. The second time I saw the target, I grabbed the target, I threw it away in Jesus' name, and they were healed. And that's usually how it works. It's not, it's not how 
how much volume's in your voice or it's not how meticulous it is or it's usually I only do what I see my father doing in heaven. God opens up our eyes to see what the problem is then you just I mean that's just one of my small experiences over like you know there's so many whatever who cares who cares you just need the oil you need fresh vision God's vision is the reality of realities if you want his vision his provision comes with his vision that he gives you and his vision burns in your heart you know that thing that just makes you go oh if only I could just oh I just see such destiny well that's your that's Probably God dreaming with you what he wants you to be. I used to like just daydream at work. I'd be bending my wood. I used to I'd build guitars until I hurt myself. I'd bend guitars, like the sides of the guitar so that you know they can sit on your lap and stuff like that. And I would just be daydreaming. I'm like, Holy Spirit's moving over here and then boom, all these people fall down in the presence of God. People are getting delivered from depression, anxiety, fear, and the joy of the Lord. Said them, Look, Holy Spirit's moving over here now. And then boom, people are just falling on the ground like dominoes, laughing in the joy of the Lord, getting healed. They, I didn't know God was this real. And they're crying. You know, just, ah. That is my dream. That's what's inside of me. It's, for, it's to make God real to people as he pours through you. It's just a yielding. A yielding. And if he could do it with, through me, he could do it through you. And if he could do it through you, he could do it through your neighbor. And if he could do it through your neighbor, he could do it through your neighbor's neighbor. And if he could do it through your neighbor's neighbor, then the whole city will be full of God. The whole city can be full of God. The whole country can be full of God. If the whole country can be full of God, then the whole earth will be full of his glory. But it just starts with just you and your friends. <laughs> just starts with just you and your household. And believe in, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your house shall be saved. It's more than just having fire insurance. It's being filled with God to overflowing into others. Like when there was little boats on the water and the disciples were in the boat and they were all fearful and a, steer, a storm was there. Jesus is asleep resting on his pillow. Just relax because he lives from a different dimension. And then the disciples are fearing for their lives. Save us, Lord, we're going to perish. The storms of this world are so great. And I've done that myself. Who, who's ever prayed this prayer? Help, Lord. <laughs> Who hasn't prayed that prayer? <laughs> You'll, I'm guaranteed you'll be praying that. Help, Lord! What is it? And you get confused. And, <laughs> and the you other know, screaming in the boat. Help, Lord! We're gonna perish. We're fearing for your lives. You know. <laughs> Jesus is like, oh boy. Gets up. Peace. Be still. <laughs> He, he can only re release what was already in him, the Prince of Peace. <laughs> he released his peace, boom, pushed out that spirit of terror and uh, spirit of fear, you know. <laughs> God's not giving us a spirit of fear. <laughs> That's a different spirit compared to the spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is awesome and glorious and awe and power. <laughs> but this was a spirit of fear, like a demon spirit of fear, causing fear in the disciples, causing the fear for their own lives. Hallelujah. The spirit of the fear of the Lord just shows you the life of God and you're in awe and wonder how God doesn't just wipe us off the planet. And you just don't ever want to ever sin again because you just want to be with Him for eternity. Peace. Be still. He released the peace that was in Him. That there's something peculiar. I think it's in Luke uh, 4 or something like that. The Bible says that there were other little ships on the water as well. And they received the overflow of of the of the Jesus and his disciples boat and they received a peace and a calm as well along with the disciples who were close to Jesus so just the people who are around you get the overflow of your spirit life your neighbors get the overflow of your spirit life so do mine and they need it <laughs> cuz i know what's in them <laughs> uh, and they get the overflow of my spirit life just like, and they, they get the overflow of that peace and the open heavens that I walk in sometimes. It's not, it's not 24 7 yet. I'm getting there. I get distracted by things sometimes, you know. Sometimes, uh, yeah, whatever. Hallelujah. Oh, I guess. Oh, yeah, 44. Okay, I'm running out of time. Um, I don't even remember what it should be called this video. We'll call it just uh, a question mark or something.